Well, Rock Church, how's everybody doing? You guys good today? Good? Roy, you, you okay today? I'm great. I'm glad you're great, but you're sitting in a different area. You got your kids? Sorry to embarrass I'm not trying to embarrass your whole family, but, but anyway, I'm glad y'all are with us too. So, man, it's good to be with you guys and to see you. I want to thank y'all for being here with us. And um, let me give a shout out to everybody who's watching online right now. And would you guys welcome our online group that is with us? And uh, whether you're watching live right now or on demand at a later date, we're just really glad that you are with us. And, and I would say this, if you're new with us, my name's Josh, I'm one of the pastors, and uh, just excited about being with you this morning, and want to encourage you, get connected with us. Either stop by the new here tent, use a QR code at your chair, you go to the connect corner, all those places will lead you to the same thing, and that's somebody who wants to get to know your name and just help you journey through life, all right? So really glad you're with us, and hope you'll connect with us that way. And guys, I've had a great week. I'll just let you know, I've been at camp pretty much all week. Uh, we started our high school camp on Sunday, and it was phenomenal. Had about 150 people there. Uh, saw eight or nine baptisms uh, on Wednesday night in the ocean. I know we've got several more that are planned, and it's just been going great. And then we flipped it and started middle school on Friday, and uh, things are going well for them as well. I know we've got some baptisms tonight, so let's just be a little excited that camp has done well. Um, the largest number of people that we've had at our This Gen camps. And, and, and let me just say this. Thank you. I, I mean, thank you because camp couldn't happen if it wasn't for you all. Well, like camp happens, one, because we have incredible VIPs, uh, volunteers is what we call them, VIPs, that are down at camp and have made it happen. And they've been staying up late and working hard all day and doing all that. We've got staff at camp. Um, but in addition to that, when you give, what you do is you make it possible for kids to go to camp. For some of those kids, what it does is just reduce the rate, uh, so it makes it cheaper for moms and dads to, to send their kids to camp. Other kids can't afford to go, and we make sure we never turn a kid away. Um, so there are kids that have gone to camp because you have, at, at, at a minimum, reduced the price, and for others, provided their entire way. So thank you, all right? Thank you, because lives are truly being changed as they dive in. Uh, to the topic of the Holy Spirit this week, all right? So now, let, let me get into where we're going today with this series uh, that we started last week. It's called Tailgate Talks. And uh, the whole idea of Tailgate Talks is that, that if we'll sit down and have a conversation, that maybe you've done that with a mom or a dad or a grandparent. Maybe you've actually been sitting on a tailgate having conversation. And uh, last week we launched it by saying we're going to be in the book of Proverbs and we're going to deal with wisdom. And we talked a lot about wisdom last week. And now every week following that, we're going to see how wisdom is applied to certain things. Like for instance, uh, this week we're gonna talk about how wisdom is applied when it comes to warnings. Like warnings. Just curious, go ahead and admit it. How many of you all are not very good at following warnings? All right, you're, you're with me? Like some of you are not very good at following warnings. Like, like some of you are the person that when you get to the Mexican restaurant, like they say, don't touch the plate. How many of y'all touch the plate? Like, you know what I mean? Like you ignore that. Some of you, what you do is, is that you, when you get on an airplane, like you're not very good at the warnings. Like if the oxygen mask comes down, you'll pay attention to that, but you don't pay attention to the flight attendant right? Like how many of you all don't pay attention to the flight attendant in the warnings? Okay. I am proud of those of you who raised your hand. Every, everybody else, you're a liar. And I'm going to preach about lying today, but, but you're lying because nobody listens to the flight attendant. We're all on our phones doing our own thing. And then when it comes to these, let's just be honest. How many of y'all actually pay attention to the dashboard lights? Like most of us probably don't. Most of us, this little flat tire warning, you're like, I don't even know what that logo means, so I don't care. 
I was talking to a college student. We were talking this week about this one. How many of y'all ignore this one? Some of you can go ahead and admit it. This college student, she goes, Josh, I have no clue what that symbol means. And I don't care because I don't have the money to fix whatever is broke. So I just get into my car and pray that it works. But let me talk about two of these specifically. How about we talk about the gas one? Like, like some of you, like when you see the gas light come on, you're like, no big deal. I got 27 more miles. I'm going to milk this thing for all I've got. Others of you, others of you, when you see the gas light come on, you're like, no! Her name is Krista. <laughs> that when the gas light comes on in our vehicle, Krista freaks out. Like she'll call me, I won't even be with her. She'll be like, my gas light's on. <laughs> like I'm in trouble and I'm not even with her. If I'm actually the one driving the car and the gas light comes on, like she freaks out. She's like, you gotta get gas. I'm like, we got 27 miles, baby. She's like, if you run out of gas, I, I promise. You know what I mean? And like starts down that road, right? Like, like she sees that one and is like, that's a big deal. Some of us see, not that one, but that one. That little oil lights. That little oil light comes on and you're like, oh, I don't know what that is. What's the big deal? Her name is Abby. <laughs> that would be my youngest daughter. I got in her Jeep the other day. Well, let me change that. I got in my Jeep the other day that I let her drive. Right, parents? You know what I'm saying? Like, I paid for it. It's in my name. It's still my Jeep. She just happens to get to drive it. And I got into it for some reason. She's been away at college, that's okay. But I got away, got into her Jeep, and I started to back up, and I looked up at that little sticker they put in the left corner of your windshield about oil change. And I looked at it, I went, that date doesn't look good. And then I looked at the odometer number on it, and then I looked down at the odometer in the Jeep, and I was like, what are you doing, kid? Like in my mind, that, that's what's going through my mind. Because she wasn't a little over. She wasn't 400 miles over. She was 4,000 miles overdue for an oil change. But in addition to that, it wasn't just like that the, the, the thing said she needed an oil change, the oil light was on. And the oil light wasn't just on, it's a little bit newer vehicle. It actually said, change oil. <laughs> to when I found Abby, I said, Abby, have you seen the light and the words? He, she goes, oh yeah, I just figured you'd do something about that. <laughs> yeah, oh, I will, <laughs> right? Like, like to her, that was wasn't that big of a deal. Like some of the lights are a big deal, some of them aren't. I think we kind of do that with God at times. That God gives us warning lights. He puts warnings in front of us. And for some of them we go, well that one's not a big deal, but that one is. Like we'll look at like, well a warning is if I don't surrender my life to Jesus, I'll go to hell. Well that's a big warning, so I better do that one. But then you see the warning where he says, don't gossip. And you're like, oh, that's not that big of a deal. Pick up your cross and follow me, deny yourself. Well, he didn't really mean that. And we try to decipher, well, what warnings from God are a big deal and which ones aren't? Well, I'll say this, they're all a big deal. They're all a big deal. And we would be wise to pay attention to them. And so, so that's the challenge that, that I want to give us today is that we sit down on a tailgate and we have a conversation by looking at the warnings and living by their light. 
I want us to do that by going to uh, Proverbs chapter six, because I I can't go through every warning that God gives us. There's all kinds in scripture, but I can at least pull out a section from the book of Proverbs where he gives us a warning. And and this is what he has to say. The, The writer in Proverbs, this is what he wrote. He said, there are six things the Lord hates and no seven things he detests. Now, let me just pause for a second. Like that's strong language. I I would think that we would do well any time where we see something that says the Lord hates this, we would do well to pay attention. So let's look and let's see what kind of warnings he gives. He says there are six things the Lord hates, no seven things he detests, haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that kill the innocent, a heart that plots evil, feet that race to do wrong, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who sows discord in a family. That that in this verse, we get seven things that it says the Lord hates, that he detests. They're warnings, and they're warnings for this reason. That if we don't pay attention to them, they will destroy our lives or the lives of others. So what he does is he gives us a warning. And the way he gives us these warnings, what I want to do is I want to break it down and and make it just, if I could say this, just a little bit simpler. Like, Like if I could take that scripture and go, okay, how do I paraphrase it? This is how I've paraphrased it. That, that if you start that scripture, it talked about having haughty eyes. Well, I'll just call that arrogant eyes. Eyes of arrogance. Eyes that when I look at people or I look at things, I come at them with an arrogant set of eyes and I judge. That, that, that I'll look at people and I'll judge people before I even know what's going on in their life or their story. Guys, God hates that. So much so that, that if you look at Jesus, when he was walking on this earth, he went to the Pharisees, the religious leaders of the time, and they were known for this kind of lifestyle. They were known for looking at people and judging them. They were known for looking at people and saying, well, you're not following God right, and I am. They were known for being rule followers and and holding people's um, life against them. And what I mean by life is if somebody was sick, like they were blind, they would say, well, that person's a sinner. Like they had arrogant eyes, so much so that Jesus, when he was walking amongst them, looked at these leaders and said, you are vipers and sons of hell. I mean, Jesus took this serious. And guys, if we're honest, I think all of us struggle with this. That we have arrogant eyes that we look at people and we judge them immediately and we don't think of them as better than ourselves, but we actually think that we're better than them. The the church is pretty guilty of this. I was talking to somebody just yesterday and they were sharing with me about a friend of theirs who had really been hurt by the church because they had been judged without even knowing their story. And this girl was like, I'm just giving up on church. And she was giving up because somebody looked at her with arrogant eyes. And we're warned against that. We're warned against arrogant eyes and lying lips. Again, put it in my paraphrase, lying lips. Two different times in that section of scripture, it talks about lying. So I'll put it together in just one way of lying lips. And and here in my household, especially when my kids were younger, there was one rule, don't lie. Like that that was the number one rule in our house, don't lie. And the reason why is because when we lie, we break trust. And once you break trust, then it's just a constant trying to figure out, well, you tell me the truth or you tell me a lie. I'm not for sure. So it was a big deal in our house. And we see that it's a big deal with God. Why? L- let me give you my opinion on why I think it's a big deal. Now, there's probably multiple reasons 
But let me give you my, and I'm going to say opinion on this. My opinion on why God hates it. And my opinion is this, because it's the exact opposite of him. See, God is truth. Jesus is truth. There is no falsehood whatsoever in Jesus. He's 100% truth all of the time from the beginning to the end. It's truth. So if we lie, we are being the opposite of Jesus. So much so that Jesus actually said this, that the devil is the father of lies. So when we lie, we are being opposite of Jesus and identical with the devil. And for that, he hates that. So, so we got we to gotta take a warning of, man, don't have arrogant eyes, don't have lying lips, don't have hurting hands. Now, again, if you go back to the text, the text read, don't hurt, or excuse me, it says don't kill the innocent. And we, we can go literal on that. A baby in a womb is innocent. A baby at home is innocent. A child in a school is innocent, and we need to protect them. That, that, that we can go from a child to other people, and we can go, when we hurt people who don't deserve to be hurt, who are innocent, then it hurts the heart of God. Go, 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 go even more so than just literal with your hands. What do we do by our actions that hurt people? And when we hurt people, it makes God mad. That, that we have arrogant eyes, we have lying lips, we have hurtful hands, we have an evil heart. And, and, and let me be the bearer of bad news for a second. If you're not guilty of one of the first three, then you are definitely guilty of number four. Like, like my, chances are we would all go, yeah, I've judged people with my eyes before. Chances are we'd all say I've lied. Chances are we've all hurt people at different times. But at least on the fourth one, I know this, we all have evil hearts. And you might go, oh, no, no, that person, they, they, they got a good heart. No, their heart might be gooder than yours. You like that, Allison? That's good grammar right there. I know she will. Nobody's got a good heart. We've all sinned. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. We've all got evil in our heart. Now, here's the beauty. When you respond to Jesus Christ as your savior, he transforms your heart. He changes your heart. He gives you a new heart. But that's not based on us. That is solely based on the grace and the work of Jesus Christ in our lives. So I want us to all have a transformed heart, but the only way that happens is through full surrender of Jesus. Yet, unfortunately, sometimes what we do is we say, well, Jesus, I want you to have some of my heart, but not all of it. And therefore, we have an evil heart. We have deceit in our heart. And, and then what about false feet? See, again, back to the text. The text read, those who rush in to wrongdoing, that we rush in to falsehood. And again, we've all been guilty of this. We've all known the good that we ought to do and have chosen not to do it and have run into sin. We've all sat and we've said, well, that's not a good thing to do. I know that's not of God or I know that's not what my family would, would encourage me to do. Yeah, I'm gonna run in and to do this. And we rush into doing wrong. And then there's the last one, disunity. No, no, guys, I, I'll be honest with you. When, when I first started studying this scripture, I was like, oh, why is that there? I mean, I, I don't know if you see it. And again, this is my paraphrase of it. But in my paraphrase of it, that, that the scripture says, arrogant eyes, lying lips, hurting hands, an evil heart, false feet. Like, like, do you see it? That's all about the body. Arrogant eyes, lying lips, hurting hands evil heart, false feet. And then he throws in at the end, disunity. And I remember just thinking, why? You go to the actual verse, it read discord in the family. Why bring it up? Because disunity 
Discord hurts the family. Think of it this way. That when I do these things, these warnings that he's given me, it hurts my body. And then when I bring disunity into the family, it hurts the family body. When I bring it into my school and onto my, my sports team, it hurts the body. When I'm disunified in the church, it hurts the body. So like these warnings are for our body and the whole body, whether that's church, whether it's family, whether it's your friend group. So what do we need to do? Listen to the warnings. Look for the warnings and then live by their light. Live by the light of the warning. See, here's the beauty of these warnings. They're not hard to, to understand. Like, you don't have to guess, do you? They're pretty clear. You don't have to wonder, well, what did God mean by lying? What did God mean by hurt? Like, like it's, it's very clear. Now, I know not all things are always clear. Like, I was talking with Krista this week. I actually sent her a text. I had an opportunity to go golfing yesterday at a nice club, and, and I knew my schedule was kind of crazy, and I wouldn't be able to go home. So I texted her. This was on Thursday. I texted her. I said, hey, hey, baby, uh, I've got this great opportunity. Can I go do this? And she replied, it's fine. <laughs> what do I do with that? Go home, Right? Like, 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 it's fine. Like, I'm like, this is unclear. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to text and find out. Like, it's fine or it's fine. And she replied back, oh, no, I got plans that day. I won't be home. Is that good? Yeah, you go. And I was like, whoo, awesome. See, like, it was unclear. Now, sometimes she's really clear with me. Like, some of you know, there's a food I won't eat. It's called tuna casserole. Like some of you know the story. Like I got a bad habit of picking my toenails and leaving them laying around. And she warned me and warned, yes, Miss Debbie, I'm sorry, but she kept warning me. And then one day I came home and I was eating dinner and she goes, hey, that's a special recipe. It's called toenail tuna casserole. She was clear that day. <laughs> I understood the warning See, the beauty of, of, of God here, we don't have to wonder. Like, it's clear. So just live by the light. The, the, he makes it very clear for us. Just live by the light then. And, and understand this. Those lights, when they come on on your dashboard, they don't come on to hurt you. They don't come on to harm you. Those, those dashboard lights come on to help you. They, they help you maintain your vehicle. They help you continue to have a successful vehicle. In the same way, God's warnings aren't there to harm you. They're there to help you. They're there for your good to give you a successful life. So what would it look like if we just lived by them? Well, let me keep going in the scripture. It reads like this. It's Proverbs chapter 6, verse 20. And it says, My son, obey your father's commands and don't neglect your mother's instruction. Keep their words always in your heart. That, 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 let me pause on that for a second. That, that my son, obey your commands and, and don't neglect my, my, your mother's instruction. Like, like when I read that, I, I especially read it in this idea of having a tailgate talk. Like I pictured this verses before giving us these warnings. I pictured this and I, I pictured that parent, that coach, that mentor, that friend, that grandparent saying, hey, let's pull up a chair. And maybe that chair was on a tailgate. And maybe it was on a, a seat on a boat. Maybe it was on the bank of the river. 
Uh, maybe it was in the couch in the living room. Maybe it was in the car while you're driving down the road. May- maybe it was in the, on a bench in the locker room. But, but wherever it was, you're, you're having that conversation. And so I picture it as my son, daughter, obey your father's command. Well, father there at first just think obey God's command. But then take it to anybody giving you instruction in life. Pay attention to what it is they're saying. Live by their life. The next verse reads this way. When you walk, their counsel will lead you. I mean, think about this for a second. That if we'll live by their light, then that counsel, that coaching will lead us. That that when I walk into my my house and your your parents ask you a question or your spouse asks asks you a question, just tell the truth. And don't lie. You've heard the warning, lying lips will not lead to a a successful life. So don't lie. Just go, you know what? I'm going to give the truth. And the truth might have consequences and it might hurt, but it's better than lying and jumping into the seat of the devil. Just speak truth. That, that, That maybe you're sitting around the lunch table or at school or maybe at work and all of a sudden some gossip starts to happen. And you go, well, I... I'm not going to gossip because if I gossip, that's putting me as thinking I'm better than the other person. And if I'm gossiping, chances are it's a lie. And if I'm gossiping, it's definitely going to hurt. And I don't want to hurt somebody and then cause discord and disunity in your life. I'm not going to be a part of it. I'm going to learn my, from the warning. I'm going to live by its light. And I'm just going to say no and get up and leave the conversation or stop the conversation where it's at. Or, or maybe, maybe you walk into the locker room. And one of your buddies is there and you're just like, I I just want to talk about the coach for a second. Or maybe you walk into work and you're like, I just want to talk about my boss for a second. And there's this emotion because you're mad at him in the moment. But then you remember, no, I'm not going to sow discord into the family. I'm not going to bring disunity. I'm not going to bring it on to my team. I'm not going to bring it on to my workplace. I'm not going to bring it on to church. No, instead what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the individual personally and I'm going to talk to them personally as scripture instructs me to because I'm not. So that's what's called living by the light. That is walking in their counsel and letting it lead you. And here's the beauty. When you do that, I believe you'll sleep better. Right? Right? I mean, look at the verse. When you sleep, they will protect you. Uh, This is what I know personally. That when I've done wrong, when I've sinned and messed up, I don't sleep well. I lay in bed and I feel guilty. I'm upset. I'm thinking about the consequences of my actions. And and I can't sleep. Do you know what? I have never lost sleep over doing what is right. Like I haven't. I might lose sleep over doing what is wrong, but I don't lose sleep over doing what is right. Now, when you do what's right, sometimes there might still be some relational tension and you got to work through that. But I don't lay in bed going, oh man, I hate the fact that I made a right decision today. I hate the fact that I said no to that sin. I don't. See, when I live by their light, when I walk with their counsel, then it protects me while I sleep. And look at the last verse. The last verse reads this way. And it says, for their command is a lamp and their instruction a light. So I need to live by the light. I love this last part. Their corrective discipline is the way to life. See, there's nothing wrong with a warning. Because the warning is not to hurt you or to harm you. It is to help you and it is for your good. And I want you to think about that even right now. That maybe you've had a coach in your life, a parent in your life, somebody come to you with a warning. It is wise to listen. 
If nothing else, you've heard a warning from me today. It is wise to listen. Don't run from the warning. Don't ignore the warning. Live by its light. And maybe the way you need to do that this morning is you need to come up and maybe you need to take communion. There's communion on the right and left part of the stage. And maybe you just need to get down on your knee and thank Jesus for dying for you on the cross. And then say this, Jesus, I've seen this light today. This warning came into my life because I know I've been lying. This warning came into my life because I know I've been hurting. This warning has come into my life because I know I've been arrogant with my eyes, whatever it might be, and then deal with it, repent of it. And maybe the warning today is that you come to understand that you actually have an evil heart. And I don't say that to be mean. I say that as it is the reality of all of us who haven't surrendered to Jesus, is that our hearts need to be transformed. And so he's given you this warning to help you. So maybe today, what you want to do today is say, I want to respond to Jesus, that I want to surrender to Jesus, that I want to give Jesus my heart, and I want to let him transform it. And I invite you, you can do that in your chair by by saying a prayer and saying, Jesus, come into my life. Maybe you want to come up and take communion for maybe the first time ever in your life and say, Jesus, I want to surrender to you. Maybe you need to come to the connect corner and say, I need Jesus. Maybe it's time for a baptism and to say, I'm ready to follow him that way and let him transform your heart. Because when you do, you're living by the light. And when we live by the light, it helps us to have a successful life. When we don't, it destroys life. Remember my daughter, Abby, in the Jeep? Well, I had a similar thing happen to me 20 plus years ago. It was my first Jeep that I had ever owned. It was a red Jeep, I liked the Jeep. And I was busy and I was getting behind on work and I was traveling all the time. And I kept seeing that, that I needed to change the oil. And I'm like, I'll get to it, I'll get to it. And then I had a flat tire And I was like, man, I got to get the tire fixed. So I went to a mechanic and said, can you fix my tire? And I thought I asked him to change my oil, but I didn't. And I kept driving the Jeep and kept driving the Jeep all through the summer. Eventually I went on a long road trip. And while I was driving on this long road trip, all of a sudden my red Jeep started to lose power. And then the next thing I know, I started hearing a noise. Tick, 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 tick. Oh, you know that noise. And then the next thing you know, boom. Engine locks up. I blow the engine. Destroy. A nice Jeep worth a decent amount of money. Done. Never to be driven by me again. Why? I ignored the warnings. I don't want to see that in your life. So do me a favor, why don't you stand up right now? And here's what I wanna encourage you to do right now, is I want you to come and I just want you to lay it at God's feet. I want you to recognize it, that He's in the room right now. That He's in this room and He's given us a warning. So I wanna encourage you to have the faith to say, Jesus, help me to have this faith just to step out. Ask him to make you deeper. Ask him to take you further. Ask him to make you wiser. And just follow him in this. He's in the room with us right now. So I'm going to invite you to sing along with Michelle as she leads us this way. Michelle, come on. Start belting that out. Come on. Let's just start singing along with us. Let's do that today.
Let's do that right now. We 